cut all carbs out of meal five again. Again. No. So it's not right now. It's time to get skinny. All your carbs, okay? Eh? Hmm? All your carbs? All my carbs? What do you mean all my carbs? So you cut all your carbs? Out of meal five. Oh. Instead of lowering four out of six meals not have carbs in them. Which is not bad still. What's hunger, what's hunger like right now? Well, hunger was, my hunger was through the roof. I was waking up starving. Like, stomach hurt, nauseous, hungry for a while. And I had like a pretty serious weight feed last week. I think it was like three days of like 400, 500 grams of carbs, which for me is a lot. And then it just disappeared. And so yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I enjoy starving myself in prep, so it feels wrong. Like, I want to be hungry and I want to have like no carb and just no fat and just suffer. So. Just follow the plan. Stick to the plan. I'll suffer in a week or two. And you're cooking all the food still? Chef King. I can see that. Chef Chicken. Chef Christy. <laughs> this is how Christopher's eating his chicken right now. I put it in the crock pot with some low sodium bone broth for three hours on low. So simple, you guys. And then I just shred it up with a fork. I put like seasoning in it, like whatever. You know there's a thing you can buy on Amazon, you put the chicken breast and you just turn it and it shreds it for you. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll do the old school way. Shredded chicken. This should last like mm, four days. Disgusting cod. I hate fish. Actually, I do like fish, but I don't like cooking fish. I like getting fish like cooked for me at a restaurant. No. Remember, remember cod is the least fishy fish of the fish? It is? Yeah. You don't remember that? It was like a 2020 one. The least fishy fish of the fishy fish. Still not a fan. This is a big bottle of food though. Yeah, it was a big one. I didn't mean to get that, but it's the original. The OG. Big Shalula guy. Um, you want to intro this? Do I answer a question right now? I don't have a question ready. Do you need to do an A? You have a question for me, babe? about our daughter Bradley. The favorite thing about our daughter Bradley? Um, her smile. <laughs> no, it's so cute. He goes, who bear? And she just like looks at him and then starts smiling so big. There's all these different smiles. Sometimes she comes out after just waking up and she's like, it's this little like content face. And sometimes she has a scrunchy evil nose where she smiles and she's like, yeah. What? Is, that, is that the uh, hot sauce of the week? I'm on this kick. I'm trying to do the zero calorie sauces now only. So this is less invasive to my nasal cavity than sriracha. Because I'm a huge pussy when it comes to hot sauce. They're not even, these are like meat, mild sauces. They're very good on fish. I eat a lot of fish, so yeah. What is up, YouTube? I think we're doing a Q&A today. I haven't picked out any questions. So I'm actually gonna look at them. Eat my meal. Courtney asks the first question, and then we're gonna train some chest and continue along there. So, give me like 30 seconds. I'll pick one. I so just give her some love. <laughs> what are you doing? Freaked out. That's the strange. You show them your scary breakout thing. I have to get it to work first. I'm, it was a process. This is what happens when you're four weeks out. I get really cool shit that I'm really excited to try. Send me like a hydrogen water thing for recovery and health and crazy things. But you have to like clean it, rinse it with vinegar, let it sit for two hours, do all this stuff. And I'm like, whoa. Like, I have boxes from Amazon from four weeks ago sitting over there because I don't have the energy to open them. Like, a very limited work capacity right now. Yes. Good job. Let's go. Time to crank it up. I'll put this on repeat on the way to the gym. Let's go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This is me hyping my man up. <laughs> Chris is like, shoot me. Love you, man. Bradley getting into it? Bradley getting into it. Questions were really bad this time, guys. I'm sorry. You got me. We gotta step this shit up. What, just because I'm training chest today, it says, what are the essential exercises for push day? Incline, <laughs> incline, dumbbell press. 
is my absolute essential chest press. I literally use that to mitigate or to monitor my strength, build the chest, and do everything. So, I do that today. Um, what happened to the Ford pickup? My Ford has been in the shop for, wait, what month is it right now? September? One year and nine months, because it went in January of 2020, or December, January of 2023. So it's been a year and nine months it's been in the shop, just to put fucking air conditioning in the thing. I don't know what's wrong with it, but the yeah, last year when I was moving, I was renting, and I didn't have anywhere to stay, I didn't really care, because I didn't have anywhere to park it, and I forgot about it, and I hit the guy up, he's like, oh yeah, I'm just waiting for a park been a year so <laughs> it's at the shop still okay so what when and how did you make it oh make it to this level of success what's your tip I thought he was saying what do I make of the success how did I make it to the success what when and how that's an amazing question I have no fucking clue how I made it to the level of what I've accomplished I don't know if success is even the right word but Everything I've accomplished has been a combination of hard work, a lot of luck, and great people around me. I would say just having a really amazing community of good people around me who are able to help me. The reason I'm able to branch into so many aspects of doing so many things is because I'm not doing most of them. I am just have a great team around me that can help me. But I also think that having an authentic goal is one of the most important things in being successful. Because an authentic goal to me just means like a goal that's truly for yourself. It's not because of societal pressures or your parents or your friends or what other people think is cool. It's just something that's genuinely authentic to you. And usually those are realistic because it's authentic. And your they line up with your morals and your values and it's your own definition of what success is to you. So then it's a lot easier to accomplish. So your version of success will be accomplishing what's authentic to you. I don't know if that makes any sense, but essentially, as long as you're chasing something that you really care about and it's realistically within your grasp, then you can be successful at it. And I've only ever chased after things that I felt like were truly a passion of mine. I love working out, you know, I love supplements, I love the business, I love everything that I do. And it all kind of played out as it did. And I never wanted to be at the level that I am. I just wanted to work out really hard. I wanted to be a bodybuilder. I wanted to win, be a pro bodybuilder. I wanted to get to the Olympia. I wanted to win Olympia. I wanted to win another. And I was just going one at a time. And life just kept flowing into it. I never really got ahead of myself, so I don't know if that makes any sense, but the concept of having an authentic goal and really sitting down about what you're working towards and accomplishing, making sure it's what you want, not some bullshit of like pressures and needing, being stuck in the simulation of reality of what you're being pushed into, I think will help you be a lot more successful. Bring back 2022 vibes. Public gyms, revived gym, wearing a hat. I, don't, I feel really weird wearing a hat, but going to a public gym, I was like, fuck that, put a hat on. So we're here at good old Revive Gym. Gonna move some of the good old Rolls Royce silver dumbbells. Have some fun. I don't know how we're gonna get in though, because the doors are locked and I don't have a membership, so let's see if we can get inside. What's up? I ruined my hair too. Sick. What? I mean, I've already kind of teased it coming, but we're finally launching the app. Monday? It's been pushed back for months at a time now. And I don't even know what date it is today, but we're finally launching the standard training app. And it's fucking legit. I cannot lie. It's legit. It's literally the training program that I've had for the last six months of everything I've been doing. It's booked into the Olympia split program and it's periodized properly for specific strengthening lengths of ranges of motion, different periodizations of compound strength versus volume versus supersets versus not. Everything is like perfectly in order of what I did. So you're not just doing what I'm doing today, you're doing the specific order of the periodization of my training on there. And then there's like five other splits. There's a full macro calculator, which I use for my full day of eating and it worked perfectly. So it's legit, I'm fired up about it. And this is just like what it's launching as. We have a full web team, dev team, on the back end, updating it constantly. So I'm fired up about it. Go full steam ahead on this thing. It's been a year of building this thing and a lot of money. So it's, it's legit. The tech is real. The training programs are fucking sick. So fired up about it. And we're gonna be putting more styles of training in the future too, not just pure bodybuilding. So lots of cool stuff to come.
Uh, this bench and these dumbbells, that little click that they make when they spin. This is nostalgic as hell. The dumbbells here are definitely heavier though, holy shit. Dude, they're like <laughs> way done, heavier. Like 10% heavier. I did 70s for chest? No, not happening. Yeah, these things are humbling. Doesn't even make sense. Zila 3004 says, are you, ha are you happy with your actual life? I like this question because actual life insinuates that I can't talk about being happy about the simulation of my life. I'm all obsessed with the simulation that we're all living in right now. And I'm proud to say that I'm actually happy with my actual life. The reflection that I have is like tearing away everything physical and picking my like top core values, which is family, relationship. If I have that and I lost everything else, would I be happy? A thousand percent. And I mean, it's kind of obvious to say when you have a family, but it's just also a moment to be very grateful for the fact that I have a family that I love so much. That is the biggest privilege in the world. So strip away everything, evident of my external simulation of a life that people see online. And I'm very happy with my actual life. And I don't mean simulation as in like I'm creating a false reality. I just mean like you guys aren't living my life. So what you are depicting of it is your own subjective reality of what you see of what I choose to put out. So it's still a simulation of my life. You know what I'm saying. Hashtag simulacra. There's a feeling of feeling happy through those things. And let's say someone just feels so happy because all these things that are physical is making them feel happy, but then they're actually missing the point of what it actually truly does mean to be happy, which is those core values that you were saying. Like, is that... Like seeking external excitement and joyish moments rather than just like true lasting happiness. Mm -hmm. I think definitely some people do, and that's kind of what I was joking about in the simulation is like, our world has always been based off like media, essentially. Art, books, education, whatever. And nowadays, we literally consume more social media than we do reality. So the reality that we build in our brain is a simulation of like what's actually real out there. And I think people seeking the things that they see on social media or online or what other people have, even if it's me, you know, like, I'm strong, I have a fucking win Olympias and all these things. Well, if I did that, I'd be happy like Chris. But those aren't even the things that make me happy. They're just the things that I present on social media. And I think if you're searching for an exciting moment on stage at the Olympia or like, like that's the biggest thing for me. If I, if for me happiness was like being on stage under the lights, hearing my name being announced to be Mr. Olympia, I'd be happy for fucking five seconds a year. And there would be a lot of stress on that one moment, which there is, but there would be a lot of pressure on that and everything else would suck if I didn't have that. So I think happiness for me is, like I said, it's authentic goals, having a strong set of values that are really important to you that overpower everything else. For me, it's family and relationships, connection, being able to be myself around specific people when I need it. And I have that right now, so everything else is just fun little bonus on the side. It's crazy to think that, like, those are mo the most amazing feats in human history whether it's like building the Empire State Building, building the London Bridge and like winning Formula One or filming Olympia, it's still all very short-lived, even though it's like a, such a monumental thing in history. For sure, yeah. I think a lot of people don't understand that high levels of success actually sacrifice happiness. It's not the other way around. So, let's think on that one. <clears throat> I almost got a little carried away there and I was gonna drop them and do 150s, but I realize I'm four weeks out right now. And if I properly control the negative like I'm supposed to be, have like, not a pause, but like a control in the bottom, so my pec's bouncing in it rather than that stretch that takes my front posterior delts over, I'm a lot more, less risk of injury, especially being leaner. It's just like weight fluctuating more. 
long winded to say I played it safe. Controlled the tempo and 10 reps. We're still hard as fuck and I can't breathe. Do you think that in this world that we live in, the reason why people have a lot of identity crisis is because of social media and what we're feed through the world? 100%. It's the way we communicate to masses is like I said, through art and media. It's all through social media right now. It's, there's shit called reality TV show that people know it's not real, but they also watch it literally thinking it is slightly reality. And even social media is a load of bullshit. I do my best to be as real as possible on here, but the moments I have where I'm like truly like fucking emotional or like stressed or trying to support me or angry or this or that, those aren't caught on camera. It's not reality, you know? It's, you can't show it. It creates this like hyper reality of this like false narrative. and. We can't help but compare to what we see all the time. And like I said, if we're consuming more media than we are reality, we're looking at our phones more than we're spending with real people, we're gonna base media as more real than real. Fucked up. If you could get the baby girl into any sport, what would it be? What sport would it be? I don't know why, but it's tennis. <laughs> Maybe it's because I like pickleball right now. And when I'm retired and she's like 10, I want to be able to kick her ass in tennis until she can kick my ass in tennis. I feel like it's just a cool sport. And I feel like it's also like a classy sport, but it also takes a lot of like strength and explosive power and agility and endurance and everything. It's just a, it's a dope sport in my opinion. So I'd like to, I would like to get into tennis so I can kick her ass in tennis. I started going to the gym last week. What is the most optimal workout split I can do? You are a llama, llama or goat, either one. Um, most optimal split is going to be whatever you can line up perfectly into your routine and schedule. And if you have a weak body part prior to the weak body part, but if you're just getting to the gym, I don't think that fucking matters at all. So I would just say whatever you enjoy doing. If you like doing a full push day, if you like doing an arm day, if you like having two different leg days in a week, hamstring quad, you just got to figure it out. The beauty of the new standard training app is that we have like six different programs on there that you can test it out. You can also put in the days of the week that you want to train, how many days a week you can train, how many hours you want to spend in a gym, and it will tell you the right program to take. And there's a bunch of other just extra like workouts that you can follow before actually jumping into a full program. So a lot of options on there, but I would say if you're starting, I would start with the push-pull legs or a bro split because they're the most basic common one that you can find workouts everywhere. And then just figure out what works best for your body. <clears throat> The shoe feels great, but I hate machines where the hardest part of the strength curve is the lockout. Because then you can't finish the rep unless you have a spot or you have to just fucking poo your pants like that at the end of the rep. That works too. This is arguably my favorite chest machine in like ever. This? Yeah. If it were just a little lighter, like if this were on more of an angle, so we're lighter at the contraction, it'd be better. You saw Dorian to make one like this, the better. Dorian Yates? No. Oh, Hamilton. Hey, bro, have you tried the incline one? Yeah. You're not sitting up straight, you're flat at incline, but it's very similar. And there's a latch right here that can make it unilateral or bilateral. It's really good. I just still don't have any raw shorts or any of those t-shirts or those hats. Sounds like a new problem. What? Sounds like a you problem. It is a me problem. You get more free stuff from other companies that you're not even affiliated with than your own company. <laughs> Literally.
All right, next question. I'm answering this because I literally just answered it in long form. It says, how to balance fatigue and putting in the work. I literally just introed one of my last videos ranting the shit about this. But the truth is, you don't. Trying to be really good at something, trying to put in the work of like something at an elite level, especially fucking bodybuilding, it's probably not what you're referring to, but it's a good example. Fatigue is gonna come, you're gonna be fucking exhausted. It's gonna overpower you mentally, telling you that you don't wanna go to the gym, you shouldn't go to the gym, you, you deserve this rest day, you've been working really hard, you're low carb, you slept like shit, all that kind of bullshit. And you gotta put in the work. There's no balance to it. You just gotta suck it up and put in the work because someone else is gonna do it if you don't. And that's, I can't even rant any more than I already did in my last video, but the secret to being a good bodybuilder is no matter how fucking fatigued and tired you are in the midst of prep, doing cardio, low carb, whatever, is showing up and doing the work. So don't balance it, overpower it. Understand that it's because you're working hard it's for a purpose and it'll make you better. How do you find your limits though? By finding them. How do you know what your limits are? By finding them. Which is why? Usually they're way farther than you think. I tore my lat last year and I thought I was my limit. If I hadn't torn my lat, I wouldn't have known what I would have been capable to do with such a limited time, you know? Do you feel like you have to... So you're just saying finding a limit is by hitting that limit? Sometimes. I don't think you will ever know what your limit is unless you hit it. Otherwise, there's always a gap between you and the limit. And you don't know what it is unless you hit it. Do I think that's the best way to live all the time? Absolutely not. Do I think being the best in the world or trying to be absolutely elite at something is necessarily a healthy way to live? Absolutely not. But do people still want to do it? Absolutely. So, you know, if you want to test your limits and understand the risk versus reward of it, I've injured myself. I've been stressed out. I've been fucking overwhelmed, but I've learned. I haven't even learned my limits yet. I've been damn close to them many times. So, and it's been exhilarating and miserable at the same time, but I wouldn't change a thing. Advice for people going to their first comp. I'm four weeks out and a little nervous. My advice is that nerves and excitement are the same thing and there's nothing more exciting and beautiful than the human experience of ang anxious nerves about something that you care about. And I was in the same boat. I used to like black out and get nervous and hate it. And now I look forward to that feeling of like nerves and like butterflies in your stomach before getting on stage because it's just part of the human experience. It's something like exciting that you don't get to feel every day. It's feeling, it's emotion. It's excitement for something you've worked towards. I think being able to actually be excited, like changing your frame of mind, being excited to embrace the nerves rather than trying to get rid of the nerves completely changes your perception of anything you're doing. And I think that's the secret. Don't ever try and deny anything that's coming up in you, any emotion, any feeling. Anything that's inside of you is your truth. Embrace it, own it, enjoy it, feel it, sit with it, and just be with it because that's life. It's the best advice I can give anyone for nerves ever. And anything else in life that you can apply to. Is there a reason why you train barefoot or is it just more comfortable? Kind of both, more comfortable. I have my own gym when I'm here, I don't train barefoot because it's not my gym. But I'll train in socks no matter where I am for legs. A, it's more comfortable. B. I have wide feet and I like being able to spread my toes. And I found that I used to wear Converse and my toes were getting crammed in my Converse and I had really bad knee pain. And I changed a few things. I got smarter in X, Y, and Z, but didn't really change much about my training other than stopping to wear shoes. And my knee pain literally has been like negligible for the last three years since. So maybe it worked, maybe it didn't, but either way, I don't want to fuck with it and change it. So we'll figure it out. <clears throat>
All right, it's a wrap on the workout. Chest, delt, some triceps. Beautiful, good old day. Let's answer another question. How to reach your level? You don't. What's your favorite anime? So, I'm gonna answer what I'm watching. Axel was here, and he's the anime king for me. He told me to watch Solo Leveling. Great show. There was only like 12 episodes or something, and I finished it in like three days, but it was a great show. Just fucking increased power levels, training, getting stronger, everything you in prep as a bodybuilder. You just want to see someone getting jacked, fucking bouncing at power levels. Great show. Quick, easy watch, no filler episodes, and it was really good. Also watching Death Note right now. Should have watched it forever ago. Everyone's been telling me to watch it. I see why it's one of the GOAT ones of all time. But my favorite's still Naruto. It's just the fucking deepest, heaviest story. And it's my 2020 deep in prep. COVID year anime that I just binged all year and it was incredible so nothing will ever replace that but Death Note really good solo leveling really good and I'm saving the last season of Demon Slayer for peak week so bed for that one too <laughs>
now that we have one we're like let's take it one at a time because this is a lot of work but we definitely want a big family i would like at least three i told her i want three kids and if we don't get a boy by the third one we'll go for a fourth that's what i've been saying recently but who knows if we're lucky enough to get two or three then i'll be grateful but right now we're just blessed to have bradley and we're gonna shoot for a couple more if we're lucky how many years have you been training so i started working out like i mean this is such a tough answer in 2008 i was doing push-ups and pull-ups in my basement sit-ups so that doesn't count but i got my first gym membership i think in 2010 like properly i got a summer free membership at good life fitness for high school students and that 2010 plus what 14 years that's the right math so about 14 years like effectively i've been competing for 10 years now so holy shit, 11 years this year that's crazy best recovery advice um damn that's a loaded question sleep a hundred percent and i say that as someone who tries so hard to perfect the sleep and just can't i'm such a mental overthinker sometimes that that's what fucks with my sleep like last night i woke up at 5 a.m and i was like i want to win this olympia and i was just like awake thinking about like wanting to win the olympia and like training and everything i need to do until 7 a.m and i was like fuck i'm wide awake and i just couldn't sleep but sleep is the biggest thing if you can get that on point you are absolutely golden it's also hard to sleep in prep because you're starving all the time number one is definitely sleep two would definitely be nutrition not obviously adequate protein intake these are all like the most basic things but also just having a diet that's not too inflammatory for yourself like when you're young and you can eat mcdonald's and feel great the next day that's incredible but if i had fucking mcdonald's one time right now my gut would be so inflamed and your gut is like the brain of the body it would inflame your whole body it would slow down your ability to recover your lactic acid production would be sitting in your body longer your training wouldn't be as good everything fucks up from your gut so being able to have a healthy non-inflamed gut a nice safe gut microbiome and all that good shit then you're fucking good to go i'm huge on digestion so i would say di nutrition sleep digestion are my top three i love you oh that was too funny who's that Right there. She wants Calvin. Right there. Right there. Oh. Mm. Mm. Oh. That was so cute. Oh. <laughs> T-Bum, how many days do you recommend training? As many days as you can recover from without having diminishing returns. Most people, I would say five out of seven days or six out of eight days, if you're well trained. But a lot of people can get away with four to seven days and be good to go. What was your hardest Olympia prep? That's a really, really tough question to answer, to be honest. Awesome. Probably, <laughs> that's a fuck crazy, all of them. Probably somewhere between 2018, uh, the year I was in the hospital, at like four weeks out, and that was like, like I had like still mental fear about my health from those moments of a lot of stuff that I went through, and I still play into my anxiety now, all from 2018. So that was like a definitely tough year for me getting through that. I still don't know how I just absolutely numbed everything around me and got through that. It was not healthy. It was a rough year and I was also young and didn't have the tools to handle anything or, nor the support system or anything. So it was just really tough. Uh, 
It's got to be that year, honestly. I was going to say 2021 was up there too. I went through a bunch of personal stuff that I honestly don't even talk about publicly ever. And it was a really tough year for my family and myself. So yeah, but 2018, I think, takes the cake. If you had to choose two carbohydrates, which one would you choose? If I'm in prep, potatoes and rice all day. The potatoes are so versatile. stock and have hash browns, I can have whatever, and rice is stir fried, it's life. But if I was talking about life, I would choose, ooh, is pasta gonna be on here? No. Bread and rice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But like when you say pasta, you just mean like any noodle type of form. Oh, like noodles? No, with no, his rice noodles, there's pasta, you know? Wheat noodles. Rice noodles are rice. I would say rice and uh, bread. But noodles are close for sure. If, uh, if it's all noodles, then noodles are close. Noodles are great. Would you rather have pizza or one Mr. Olympia? Pizza. I'm calling <laughs> Domino's literally right now. Nah, this is Papa John's. Papa Domino's. <laughs> Domino's is good. It's a staple, but like sometimes you just need a pizza that fucking hits, you know? Like a, what's that? Joe Slice on New York? I never had that yet. It's amazing. It's great. If we were in New York, we could be getting it. Maybe I'll drop out the Olympia, fly to New York for the Gymshark event, and go get some Joe's pizza. Sounds fucking great. Arnold, 1974. Dorian Yates, 1992. Ronnie, 1999. Phil, 2011. Sebum, 2024. Who takes home the up? I'll tell you, I'm coming in last. Actually, I might beat Arnold because times have changed a lot. But I would say I personally would put Phil here. Ronnie would win. If I was a judge and I was sitting there, Ronnie would win. But if you were asking me my personal opinion, I would pick Phil. And I might do 2013 instead of 2011 for Phil. But I just fucking, that dude's physique is insane. And maybe it's because I saw him in person and it was the craziest thing I'd ever witnessed. I never had seen Ronnie in person, which I'm sure was probably equally if not more crazy. And Phil was just my era, but it would be really fucking cool to see peak Ronnie and peak Phil beside each other because it's just such different physiques, but it's absolutely insane. But definitely the top two. Someone said, are you single? I'm not single, Andy. That's crazy. I have a child. His name is honestly Andy. I feel like I got lost. <laughs> Bradley's just screaming like a pterodactyl back there. All right, I got what? What are they doing? I don't know. Feeding her, playing with her. She's going crazy. Um, yeah. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Chest day complete. Cooking some steaks tomorrow. Having a Sunday day. So, peace out.